Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's resume our complete beginner's guide to Aranorth Chronicles, shall we? Well, our character is doing great, and we just completed our first um, mission uh, by, well, not really a mission, it was our own objective, to explore Oakwood. I pushed the M key, I went here, and we cleared it. But notice, we can actually go there again. We can continue to go here and explore if we like um, to just kind of grind and that is your choice but let's push C and go to the character screen because I want to talk about some of the things that we got we just got a masterwork morning star now I equipped it you push the minus button to the left of the icon to unequip it okay so in this case I would have no equipped items I was not understanding this screen or interpreting it right when I was explaining it before, which is why I accidentally unequipped the Morningstar Talisman. I thought these were simply showing and hiding the different categories from which they uh, belong to, but no, this just means like up here, this equipped items is its own category. And then when stuff is unequipped in your inventory, it goes into weapons, armors, accessories categories, which I mistakenly interpreted this. So you have to put the plus button, and then you'll notice how the Morning Sun Talisman jumps up into the equipped items. So I'm going to equip that new Masterwork Morning Star we got, the Battered Shield, and I'm going to upgrade um, our Masterwork Acolyte Robes instead of the Acolyte Robes. Now notice, though, um, as an exchange for this, okay, this is your choice. You... If we equip the Acolyte Robes, it's automatic. Every turn we'll heal two hit points, okay, and get these resists, which is pretty good. If we equip the Masterwork Robes, the same thing happens, but it will use two of our AP every turn to heal us for four. So, in all honesty, this is double effective, which I like, but I'm not sure I want it to drain my action points. So I'm going to equip it for now, but we're going to pay attention to our AP in battle, and see if that becomes a problem for us. Like if we get bottlenecked and we don't have enough AP to go around because of that. All right. So now all of our stuff that's equipped is up here. And anything that's unequipped will be organized into different categories. Uh, I'm going to go back to our perks screen. And we did get perk points from completing the forest. But we only have 20. And the cheapest perks are 30. So we'll simply move on from there. We got a little bit of money. Um, and... We also have some new items in our deck that we can use. Push B to go to the deck builder and see exactly what those are. We have this um, Dusty Grimoire, which we want to sell. This is not in our deck. These are extra cards that we could think about adding um, if we like. And after doing, you know, the fight uh, for a bit, um, I'm sorry. This is an extra card that we can think about adding because we have zero of one. But all of these cards are already in the deck because you could see how many out of how many you own. But my um, Novice Acolyte actually didn't start in the deck. So I'm going to put him back in there. And we can put wooden stakes in our deck if we want to have a bunch of damage uh, that we can do to vampires. But right now we're not really fighting vampires. Um, the Prayer Beads are draw one and restore three. I love that. I'm going to put those in. Um, what else do I like that I'm not using a ton of? I'm going to put in an extra Burning Hands. I find it to be fantastic. And is there anything I like? I want to take out, you know, that I'm not thrilled about that I have? I think I'm okay. But as you start to figure out what cards are good for you, like I have 34 cards. You could go down to 30 if you want, but I kind of just experiment and see what I like and adjust the ratios accordingly. But if there's a card that you just find is just not coming up right for you, uh, like there are some cards that are on my list where I'm like, I'm just not sure. You know, like... Uh, some of these cards... Combat Training, Holy Edict, you know, Illumination, Sanctify Blade, Interrogate. This is quite expensive. Like, am I excited about this? I don't know. So the only way I can find out is by playing more and more and just seeing what I like. Your deck might be different than mine uh, because you have cards that you enjoy more or you find to be more powerful or you like 
different combos, different playstyle, and that's great. That's what the game excels at. So what I could do is go here again. You know, I could open up my journal, and I could try to do um, a quest like protect Duke Harmon, but I just think that it's too hard. I could, though, go try to do Wild Growth over in Oakstead and, you know, look at the possible rewards. Like, are these good enough for me uh, to want to try to get that I'm interested in that? I'm going to tell you what. This is what I did when I first started playing because I find the game to be difficult uh, and there's a lot going on, is I just kept grinding low-level areas just to get a feel for my deck before I was comfortable and moved on. Oakstead is really close. Like, we could go there. Um, I could also just push T and go in town, but check it out. It's um, 8 p.m., and still all the stores are closed. So we can stay in the inn if we want, or we can leave. Um, whoops. Just, you leave town. I always do that. I always push escape. You need to close the window or just click leave town. I'm going to push M, and I'm going to check out McMagnus Cove. This is going to be a little bit harder than Oakwood, but I'm okay with giving this a shot, all right? Now, this, there's a burning ley line aversion. That might actually be scary for me because I do a lot of burning damage. Um, but at the same time, I'm willing to explore and see what it's like. All right, so we're on the first screen. Notice we started with our Masterwork Morningstar, the Battered Shield, and the Talisman. We have our hand all drawn, and we did lose two AP indeed from our robes, but our resistances went up accordingly. I'll push spacebar, and here we go. All right, so um, we are going to fight an aquatic scavenger, a crab, and another scavenger. Then they want to do this. Um, now is mine. Let's alt left click to see what this means. It's a piercing element, and it's a gambit. Um, one of the odds is chosen randomly and played on the most optimal target so all he's really doing is stealing money from us all right and making us discard a card which is quite annoying i don't really want to lose money i don't have a lot of money but this guy wants to actually attack us so um i'm going to allow this to happen and focus on the damage so let's see first of all i love repel evil Let's just see if we can stun anybody. We stun these two. Beautiful. Now, this guy wants to tango. So let's see if we can hit him with the talisman. And we did. So we got the burns on. And he's going to lose hit points. And that's fantastic. Um, you can see that the aversion in this ley line is minus four um, to fire. And the way that... So I think that that means that burns are operating weaker or either they have less of a chance to trigger. Um, they can resist them more easily. But honestly, there are things in this game that I'm still like, I still have to get refreshed on or figure out and that we'll see in the combat log. So we're going to find out together. All right, I've got six AP left. Our Masterwork Morningstar, which we just picked up, is a one-handed weapon, and it splits its damage, which means its base damage is split between two elements, but it all comes from the same source. So we apply Vulnerable, okay, and we apply Bleed, and we do 2 to 5 damage um, of the Slashing type and 2 to 5 damage of the Bludgeoning type, I believe. So I'm going to just try to hit this guy in the face, and now he's changed, now is mine. You'll see he wants to heal himself. We put a bleed on him, and look at his active effects. He's losing 14 hit points per turn because of all the dots that we threw up on this dude. So if we just do three damage to him, the game is over. All right? So I'm going to illuminate, and we drew Sanctify Blade. Let's Castigate that guy, and he's dead. So let's look at the log. Castigate... Um, did 15 slashing damage to this dude and he is going to die from negative status effects so I have 3 concentration left and 3 AP left so what do I want to do 
Um, I'm actually going to just wait. I'm going to recover as much as I can. Ooh, my, my guy's like, I'll level up soon. Great. And actually, we will. We have 46 out of 50 experience, which is terrific. All right, now, um, same kind of situation. Attack now is mine. So, again, this is why equipment is so good. Every turn, we get these options. Morning Sun Talisman on that dude. Hit him with that. All right. He is changing his um, action to shielding himself. Okay. So we can almost, I'm not, I don't want to say ignore him, but that's pretty good. All right. I'm going to interrogate that guy. And he's still doing now his mine. Illuminate. And yeah, burning hands. Terrific. Okay. So we have um, only two AP left. Sanctify Blade. I'm fine. This guy's going to die from negative status effects. He has four burn on him from the burning hands. All the burn went to him, so he's dead. This guy's going to steal from us. He stole 10 from us, and he's in concealment. Okay. So this means that um, he ignores retribution damage, which we actually do a lot of. He has a 30% chance to avoid all damage, and he deals double damage. So that's a shame. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to pray right away. Um, and why did I lose damage? Let's look at the log. <laughs> oh, oh, we create and play the card... with the discard effect and we lost some health mm -hmm. all right i'm gonna burn this guy got him i'm gonna try to hit him we did hit him and he's gonna die from negative status effects so we're just gonna push the space bar and let this guy go and we just leveled up we got 50 perk points and two level up points which is absolutely phenomenal all right i'm gonna hide this and Um, when I go push C to the character screen, you see we have two level up points and we have 50 perk points. So when spending your level up points, anything with an up arrow is what you can tick up. And I recommend, um, you know, I like leveling up my skills. But some of these are quite good. You know, you can see that, for example, willpower will just give us an extra action point. So I like having an extra action point. It did cost two level up points to do that. But I'm okay with that. And then we have 50 perk points to spend. By the way, um, you can spend, you know, whatever you want um, with your level up points. You don't have to do what I did. And let's see. Uh, what perk do I want? Well, blunt weapon training would give us stun plus one. And resilience plus one. Resilience says, um, you know, we have more resistance and we get some hit points. So we could do this. Um, we could take order recruit. We could take intellectual. We could take zestful. This gives you three AP and helps you restore an extra AP, but you don't have intellectual, um, which means that you, like, don't get experience on your cards fast enough. Uh, but just being perfectly honest, I love the idea of being Zestful and getting more AP. So um, I'm going to just push the plus button on Zestful, and we take it. Now we only have 20 points, and you can see now our AP has just gone up to 20, right? So uh, we've increased our AP dramatically, and our health uh, also increased. So we're rocking and rolling. I'm going to push spacebar and move on to the next screen. Again, this is the Dusty Grimoire event. We did this before. I always like to gamble. I'm going to study it. And hey, we get to choose some cards. So we already have Holy Edict. Disrupt Ritual, Sun Spear, and Purpose are all new to us. So what I always recommend, it says, first of all, look up here. It says you can pick one. So this is a pick only one. You can, of course, put it in your hand for the next fight. You can put it in your stash. and Or you could put it in your deck. Um...
Sunspear looks pretty sick. It's burn one, blessed eight. So I'm just going to hold alt and left click to open up the codex. So um, this is a reach action. So if the enemy has counterattack or spiked armor, the attack with this spear does not uh, trigger those. And it applies burning and targets weak to blessed receive eight damage and one vulnerable. And then it also does some light damage. So I love this. I love burning. Now, Disrupt Ritual, however, is an expensive bomb card that has multicast three. Okay. Um, and it deals four to eight damage. So let's say what, what this means. Um, multicast, click on this. Multicast cards are great res uh, recipients for synergies. Once triggered, Multicast X creates X copies, so Multicast 3 creates three copies. Then each of them inherits the synergy and is played automatically on the first X enemies. So for example, a Synergy Defend 2 added in a Multicast 3 card could potentially give you six defense. Um, so in this sense, um, for six AP, we're going to do four to eight damage three times. Um, actually, let me look at this. I think that's how it works. So I think what happens is multicast three means it will take three concentration um, and then do this three times because it's counting as three separate events of cards being played just like you played three cards. Each card would take one concentration. So this is a fantastic card um, to do a ton of damage to something. You know what? Now I've talked myself kind of into that. Gosh, this is only one AP, though. No, I like the idea of having a bomb. So I'm going to put it in my hand and just see what happens. Continue. And we just push space bar. We go to the next fight. Remember, look up here. You see what you can expect. And we've got a local gossip. Um, who, you know, and we have two drunken cutthroats over here. This ability, by the way, um, is gonna say, uh, hmm, okay. She wants us to pay 10 gold to draw a card, uh, and befriend her social leave. So that's something we could think about, but... I can also, this guy's got 24 hit points. Let's just see what Disrupt Ritual does if I put it on that guy. Okay. So Disrupt Ritual did this. It did, okay. Um, it missed and it hit. So it hit three targets, but we didn't get to choose them. All right. And it missed a bit. So it still was really good, but... Um, not as easily aimable. So this, <laughs> I swear, I mean, you really have to just read the cards and that is not always enough. You got to play them. You got to see what happens. So I'm going to bat right there and this guy wants to heal. He's almost dead. Um, let's just hit him with the Morning Star. He's dead from status effects. And let's brand... Uh, this guy as a heretic and then castigate him and he's at three health so let's just um, interrogate him I only have one concentration left but nobody's going to attack me um, because this guy wants to heal because he's about to die I'll pray and space bar So he healed, he's back to 12, and um, she, her ability gave us this card in our hand, which we can play. Now, getting cards in your hand can be a bummer because you only have a hand count of five. So this is going to like prevent us from drawing new cards until we play it. kind of slows us down. Now, you see we have eight cards, but that's because we always draw our equipment cards. Um, this dude right here, I'm going to combat dummy this guy eight damage i'm gonna repel evil he resisted it let's just hit him with the morning star dead 
and we'll just um, put the Satin Talisman on her and Hex Shield her. Um, I'll batter shield myself. How much block do I have? Yeah, I have 18 defend. So she can only do 3 to 7 damage. I'm not going to play respite. I'm just going to wait. Remember, this is something you always have to think about in this game. Your AP persists through all rounds of the dungeon. So a lot of the time what I want to do is not use AP because, you know, I only regenerate a certain amount per turn. And I want to make sure that I get as much of it back. I actually get 10 per turn, but I have an upkeep of 2 from my armor. Alright, so um, let's look for the most efficient AP way to kill her. And it's honestly just putting the talisman on her because the talisman is so good. Spacebar, she's gone. Okay. And let's move to the next event. Um, we found a Tome of Knowledge. Uh, okay, so here's the corpse of an errant knight. Um, all possessions except his heavy plate armor are missing. Okay. You carefully consider your next move. So we can look for tracks, and we can't find any. I'm going to bury the corpse, um, and we now leave. So I lost 8 AP, and, you know, that was our choice. But we'll see. Sometimes that pays off for you. Sometimes it doesn't. Now, we got this Tome of Knowledge. Um, and it says, Effortless. Uses one loot from up to three random cards, and we get five experience. So you can actually play this now. Um, but I'm going to wait and do it in combat. Okay. And here we go. We got a group of four people that we have to fight. So first of all, let's just do this. And when you play this card, it's effortless. It doesn't cost against our concentration. And we get to choose one of these. Okay? We don't need to heal. We don't need to reactivate an ally. We don't have any allies out. So I think we take Smite Heretic. Okay? And um, this is a permanent gain, by the way. So this card, I'm going to put it in my hand. Okay? It puts Mark and Wrath 4 and it does damage. So let's see, who's going to attack us? This one wants to poison and attack? I don't think so. I'm going to um, smite this guy and um, interrogate him and Masterwork Morningstar, and he's going to die from the bleed. This guy wants to flank us. I don't consider these um, inconspicuous informants to be difficult at all, so I'm going to leave them there. Morning Sun Talisman, Sanctify the Blade... Hex shield. He's going to try to heal up. Um, I'm actually... Uh, I'm not going to play Respite. I'm going to wait. So we got another Tome of Knowledge. And we got a bunch of garbage local gossip cards. Okay. So you see we don't draw anything right there. I'm going to use Tome of Knowledge again. Um... Hmm. Interesting. I'll take this one again. Sure. So that guy is at five. He's almost dead. Let's just hit him and kill him. They both want to attack us. Okay, let's burn this one. Now she's going to heal. We we'll only have three to seven damage coming in. Now, what I always do, again, it's one of those games that's like Sway to Spire. You can see their intentions. So... We know what they're going to do. Now, unlike Sway the Spire, and this is a huge um, mental gymnastic feat that I had to do because I'm so trained in, you know, that archetype of Sway the Spire, they change their intentions based on what happens sometimes. So that will dynamically change your own plans. So now we only have three to seven damage coming in, and we already blocked six, so we're probably going to block everything. Um, but I need some more cards. I have five concentration. I'm going to go ahead and respite myself. All right. Fantastic. Let me Holy Edict her and Burning Hands. She's going to die from all of her burns. And then um, I'm at six block. I will spend one more AP and Battered Shield so I take no damage guaranteed against whatever she's going to do. She tried to hit me for three to seven piercing damage. Um, but what's cool is she took the uh, damage for hitting me. And let's see, so we withstood her attack, and she took our retribution damage, and she's at 6 health. So again, what's the most efficient way to kill her? Well, it's Burning Hands, because it does, it's 0 AP. 
So we she's toast. All right, we're at full health. AP is looking good. It's actually full now. And there's a chest. I'm going to open it all day long. We can pick two cards. Great. So this is a cloak. We don't have a cloak on. It costs zero AP. It gives us three defense. And our next action gets one experience point. So remember how cards level up. When you play cards that can level up, they get XP. So what that means is, like, if you have this cloak on, um, the first card you play each turn, I believe, will give you will get one more experience on it. Uh, so that's amazing. I'm going to add this to my inventory right away. And then the other options are, you know, um, I'm going to take this silk because it's a valuable that I can sell. These are consumables. We'll just put this in our stash. Continue. Great. Space. All right. Um, we're at the second to last node. We've got four jerks over here. All of them want to attack except for this front one. So first things first, let's repel evil and see who we stun. Ah, this guy gets stunned. Okay, fine. This could be painful, actually, this round. So I'm going to Illumination first of all. And I will Holy Edict this one. And hit it with the mace. And now he's going to block. Uh, he will almost actually die. I have 4 Concentration, 12 AP. Let me Castigate that one. And Talisman that one. Shield myself. And I only have 1... Um, concentration left. So I have 21 block up though. So we could potentially take one damage. Push spacebar and the turn. This guy's going to block him. This guy tries to hit me. And this guy tries to hit me. And they don't. Okay. So this guy's going to die from the bleed. He wants to do now is mine again. This guy only has 16 health. So... I'm going to Wand of Illumination this dude. He's got two stacks of burn. That's actually really good. Let me give this guy two stacks of burn and hit him with this. Now he's going to shield. He's actually going to be taking 14 damage. Yeah, he's almost dead. I'm going to interrogate this guy and castigate him. Um... Yeah, I'll respite just to draw some cards. Okay, good. Let me brand Heretic, and now he's going to heal. So now nobody's doing anything negative to us, and I'll just castigate that guy and finish him off. Um, we'll wait. He dies. He's going to die next turn, and they're both going to die from negative status. So obviously, in this situation, the best thing to always do is just push spacebar so that uh, you don't use any AP, you regenerate AP, they just die from the damage over time. Again, why I love this character. The burning, the bleeding, the damage over time, plus the healing. Very efficient. Okay, so we're going to move to the next screen. And I like what I see. I push spacebar. Oh, by the way, shucks. Um, I could have gone to my character screen and gone to my equipment. And we can equip the explorer's coat, okay? Um, so it won't work for the first round of combat, but it'll work for next round. And we'll just go ahead and close this. Oh, by the way, once equipped, they'll activate on your next turn. You see that says it up in the upper right. Like, I equipped this cloak, but it's not going to work until next round. I should have equipped it in the free stage after battle, before battle on this, but I didn't. All right, so this is a novice acolyte, and he has an unknown intent. These two dwarven dudes want to attack us. So, um, do we have any crowd control? We don't. So... I don't know what this guy's going to do, but these guys are definitely attacking. So I'm going to try to just burn them down, see how that goes. This guy's already dead from negative status effect. I'm going to burning hands in the back. Um, and... I'm going to combat training, sanctify blade, hex shield, and battered shield. And that's all I can do. So it's possible that I take damage here, but... We're doing okay. That guy's dead. He hit us. We had 19 block. And he's doing some light damage to us. Uh, but it's okay. You could see the icons appear for all of our effects going off. 
So just when we start, this is our cloak now, we just have three defense, even if we don't play any defensive cards. It's actually fantastic. Um, I will now... Oh, we got a knapsack. Yeah, whenever you get something like this, you want to use it. Um, and, you know, I'll take this rum flask. I'm just going to put it in my stash. Those are like treasure cards that you get and you just need to play them in combat to use them to, to re receive the treasure uh, let me hit you with the morning star he's going to die from five stacks of bleed let me put the burn on this dude and he's almost dead time to prayer beads because it's awesome time to hex shield that guy time to prayer okay Battered Shield, Prayer. And we have one Concentration. We have 25 block. Like, this guy is going to be at 2 health. He's going to die from negative status effects next turn. We're totally fine right here. Oh, he healed himself, so he's not going to actually die. Hey, you know what we got? We got our buddy. So this isn't really necessary, but for 2 action points, we can play our buddy. So I'm just going to, you know, um, play him on myself. And now we have a dude. So whenever you play an ally, they go up here at the top of the screen. Now, they're a little bit wonky, but you can have them attack, okay, um, by using quick attack, or you can um, right-click on them to do their special ability, which is Witch Hunt, and it, they basically give us this card, okay? Um, and we'll put that Witch Hunt on this dude and burn him up and hit him with this, and it's over. How about that? Let me, I didn't really get to do my ally very much right there. We'll, we'll look into it more in the future. But let me just say, the ally, if you attack with them, they will do their the damage that's listed, but they will receive the damage listed from the enemy. So I very rarely attack with them. I always try to do their special ability because I don't want them to die instantly. But this guy is only going to last for four turns. So each of your allies last for a different amount of turns depending on what they are, your levels, your perks, all this stuff. Up here on the top, you can see I have one ally summoned out of the two that I can summon. Um, and the enemies can target them and attack them, but they, they usually don't. Um, and in my experience, the special ability that they have is usually more favorable to attacking. Sometimes I don't even do anything with them. I just let them pass until it's like, oh, they can finish somebody off, so I'll use the ability then. If they die, nothing bad happens. They just go back into your deck like a card. So don't worry about that at all. Again, we'll see it more when we have time for it to develop, but right now we just win, so we'll push spacebar and, you know, just celebrate our dominance and say we just get to pick two of these cards. All right, so which of these cards do we want? All right. Um, so Essence we can use to recharge our wands. Light Burst, any cards that deal damage with this character, I'm usually really excited about. Um, but not ones that are, like, contingent upon it being wicked or undead. Um, so I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to put Light Burst in my stash. And this is a one-use, multicast two uh, consumable item. This is a permanent card. So always look out for, like, is, is it one use? You know, is it something I can sell? Is it, um... This is a trinket, but, you know, we already have a trinket. If it's a demon, we deal 10 damage, amplify, destroy, wicked. Um, I'm going to take this essence. And boom, look what we get. 25 money, 5 perk points, 5 experience, influence, restore all this stuff, return to the world map. And this is what I think is the best way to start the game. Just learn your deck. Just like get some slow burn on finding treasure, learning your deck, and leveling yourself up. Because you could go to Oakstead and do the level 2 quest, or you could level up and then do the level 5 quest in Lucina. But you want to get there. You don't want it to die because it's game over. So we've completed two dungeons. Our character is already, okay, level two, and we're 28 out of 100 on the way to level three. We actually have enough perk points to take something, and um, we could take um, Humble Devotion, but I'm going to take Blunt Weapons Training because I have the mace um, to get stun plus one and resilience plus one. So I'm just going to put plus on that, 
and now we're good to go. So everyone, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're still finding this guide to be informative and fun, and I hope you're enjoying Aranorth Chronicles. Take care.